Welcome to Module 3, Networking and Social Media. Networking is the process of building relationships with other people. And it is reciprocal. It's not just all about them helping you. You should be in a position to help them as well. Networking involves establishing goals for yourself, analyzing the kind of help you'll need in achieving those goals, and then in analyzing and developing your people skills, and building and cultivating your network accordingly. Why network? They say that a referral will generate 80% more results than just a cold call or direct call. 33% of people get their jobs through networking, through people they know. So let's look at the non-traditional job search, the hidden job market, as they say. Use your network to seek referrals to the hiring people. This includes family, friends, acquaintances, faculty, administrators, staff, supervisors, coworkers, and professional associations. The purpose of networking, to gain knowledge, contacts with other people, and relationships. Let's look at four layers of separation. Here is you. Your level one contact would be your friend Alice. The second level would be Alice's Uncle Bill. Third level would be Bill's friend Carol. Fourth level, Carol's boss David. So you can see your initial contact results in several layers of contact, but ultimately gets you to somebody that could hire you. Here's a list of the different types of contacts you can have. You can see neighbors, classmates, relatives, people on teams that you're a member of, people you socialize with, sororities and fraternities, student groups, former employers and coworkers. If you're a member of a religious organization, uh, people in the congregation, people who provide services to you, friends of your parents and relatives. Uh, people that are into networking, professional associations. So the law of 250, if you believe this, every person knows at least 250 other people. And they know 250 people. And they know 250 people. So that's like 15 million people you can interact with through your network of people. Use your network. It's building connections and relationships. And it's very important to do so in a bad economy. What to tell them? Make sure you let them know what your background is, your education, your career goals, and what you're looking for. Ask if you can be referred to people in their organization who could help you. Professional associations are ready-made networks of professionals in your given field. They have annual conferences. They have local chapter meetings a lot of times. They put out newsletters. A lot of times they'll have a job bank with job postings. And they, a lot of times, will have membership directories. Let's take a look at the American Psychological Association. So you can see they have information about their organization, topics, publications. They have a help center, news and events, research section, uh, careers, membership information, and so on. Topics. So you can see a lot of great information here. If we want to look and see, here's news and events, recent press releases. They have a meeting coming up. Uh, they have the uh, conference coming up. If we look at the career section, so it has job banks. So you can see a job. You can register as a job seeker. Employers can go in and post a job. You can go in. Um, if you want to see, uh, there was a student tab here somewhere. Now I can't find it. But they have information uh, that's useful to you, policy statements, uh, and so on. So definitely you want to look at professional associations as a way to get information. You should always keep a log of who you're networking with. Keep the contact information, their contact information, uh, like phone, address, and email, who they were, why you met with them, point of contact, date last contacted, summary of what you talked about, referrals they made for you, and certainly send a thank you note whenever anyone helps you. Build a strong relationships with people. Remember the four F's, family, friends, friends of family, family of friends. You never know who can help you. Nothing gets you further than a winning attitude. Remember to practice your elevator speech whenever you are talking to people. Keep track of contacts, stay in touch. Focus on quality, not quantity. 
Make sure your networking is goal-oriented and be sure to use social media. Have a plan. Be aware of expected and unexpected opportunities. Put yourself in a situation where you meet people and communicate effectively when you do. Your relationships should be quality. Stay organized. Support the individuals who help you. Follow up always. and Do it appropriately. And enjoy yourself. Have fun. Make other people feel valued. Demonstrate your thoughtfulness. Stay connected. Focus on what you can do to, for other people. Get involved. Send thank you notes. Call people back. Maintain your contacts. Keep your contacts informed. That's an important part of networking. Don't forget social media. LinkedIn is big now for developing network uh, a network of contacts. Facebook, not so much, but you want to make sure you pay attention to Facebook and Twitter. Let's take a look at this. This was a survey done. Do you use social networking sites to screen employees? So this is how employers responded. You can see 91% said yes. During the hiring process, which social networks do you use to screen candidates? You can see they use Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. During which phase of the hiring process do you look at social networking? You can see even right after receiving an application, almost half uh, are always lo are looking at your social network sites. And then it gets more and more as they go along. Have you ever rejected a candidate because of what you saw about them on a social networking site? 69% said yes. Why have you rejected those candidates? Inappropriate photos, inappropriate comments, comment, content about drinking, content about drugs, negative comments about a previous employer, poor communication skills, made discriminatory remarks, lied about their qualifications. So you definitely want to be sure your media, your social media sites are professional and always private when you're in a job search. Have you ever hired a candidate because of what you saw about them on social networking? 68% said yes, because they had a positive impression of them, their profile was professional, showed the candidate was creative, showed good communication skills, was well-rounded, had good references. So social media can benefit you if it's done right. LinkedIn is definitely the, the new tool for linking in with professionals and networking. Twitter is also, you can follow and follow people, you can tweet. Facebook is more of a social network, but it's being used more and more by recruiters. So LinkedIn is the one that you really want to pay attention to, I would say. You want to have a good profile and have a lot of good information. Take a look at these two. If you were an employer checking these two sites, which one would you take seriously? So you want to make sure when you set up your, your LinkedIn account that you set it up professionally with professional photo and you have the information in there that's going to be useful to you. So, And when looking at your Facebook account, make sure that you keep it private and anything that's public, you should have a professional outlook.